Hello, welcome and good evening to the second part in the Let's Code and DOS programming series. And last time we set up TurboC for coding, you learned how to write your first Hello World program. And in this episode, we want to go one step further to our way of having a little video game of our own. And we'll learn how to read from the keyboard. Because, well, if you have a game you want to control a character, something or other, and you will probably want to query the arrow keys or some some other keys to control the video game and maybe to quit it as well. So there are standard C functions for getting characters from the keyboard. However, those deal mainly with normal letters and what have you. And um, they can't deal with the arrow keys or the function keys or page up, page down and all the other things that you have on a PC keyboard. Because that's not standardized over all the computers. So Turbo C and Microsoft C for the DOS machines came with uh, different include files that allowed you to control the actual uh, IBM PC console and that header was called conio.h for console.io and one of the most simple things that you could do with this was to basically clear the screen for example so you don't see the leftovers of the next program of the last program and we can run this program, switch back to the user screen, and we see, yeah, the screen was cleared, Hello World is now on the top left corner, and I can run it again, and it will look the same, and we don't have it duplicated. That's nice. What this thing also gives us is um, functions to query the keyboard. For example, I can ask, has a key on the keyboard been hit? doesn't tell me which one, but uh, any key has been hit. If so, then I can do something. If not, I will basically continue with my game without changing anything. So what we basically need is uh, an infinite loop, a run loop, which executes our game engine code, basically. Uh, this could be a true infinite loop while true and do something. And then we could quit if, for example, the uh, key that was hit is the escape key, for example. And we need to store that key somewhere. And with ANSYC, we need to put uh, the variable at the top of the function. So I'm gonna store the key code in this variable. Um, and the key code is always a character, one byte, basically. And I will put a zero in here for the time being. And I want to quit if the key code um, as long as I want to quit if the key code reaches a certain value. And the question is which value should that be, right? However, I don't know exactly what the key code is here at this place. So I will just put the true in here and I want to print out all the key codes that I have. Um, so if a keyboard key was hit, I'm gonna fetch the key, and this is done via the get character function, get ch. And well, if we wanna see what this was, we simply say printf, and um, printf works like this. We write the string to be written out, then we give a format, format string, and I want to see this in hex. Um, so the format string here, percent %x means I want to see a hex value, and that should be two characters with the leading zero optionally. And uh, yeah, that should do it. And we need to make a new line at the end as well, otherwise it will clog up, clog, clog up our display, basically. So let's try this. There were errors. Um, oh yeah, true. <laughs> I'm still 
in C++ mode here y1 true is not defined so let's try again um, I can press spacebar spacebar has the hex value 20 escape has the hex value 1b that's good and when I press a cursor key like cursor up I see it's two key codes actually 00, 0 and 48 and key down or arrow down is 0, 0, 050 well that's interesting so there are special keys like the function keys and the arrow keys that have a leading 0, 0 in front of them. F1, for example, is 0, 0, 3B. I think for the game we will need the escape key 1B, 0, 0, 48, and 0, 0, 50. Okay, so we now know that KC equals, or must not equal hexadecimal. 1b. You can write a comment here. Um, loop until escape pressed. So let's try if that works. Run. We can press some keys and escape quits. Now this is perfect, right? Uh, we have this covered. However, we want special key handling if there is um, a special key. So if the key code was equal to zero, and we have to cast this because the zero is actually an integer and not a character, then we have something special. We can use the switch statement to decide what we want to do. We switch between different cases. And the cases are our different cursor keys. So if I remember correctly, one was 48, which was basically the up arrow. And you always have to break after a case, otherwise it will fall through to the next case. And the second case was the down arrow. 0x50. Here we also break. And then of course we have a bunch of other things, so this is not strictly necessary here, but other special keys right here. And in the end we want to uh, write out that we have pressed the up or down arrow key. So I'm gonna um, exchange this for some string uh, and I will call the string key basically so we need to define a variable here with sufficient space so 255 should be good um, so we have a string of size 255 and whenever we encounter a key we will um, fill the string and you can do that in C with a string copy function. We put something into string, and in this case we will write up arrow, so that we know that we pressed it. And we will also write something. When we have the down arrow, we will write down arrow. And when you have a different key, we will um, write Basically, yeah, we can we can write the key code again. We use this time the string printf function, which prints to the string s. And again, we use the special formatting to get a hex representation of the key code. So now, in the case of a special key, we will get something nice. But in the case of a normal key, we write garbage. So we still need to let me zoom in so now we see more um, we'll still need to write the key code basically I can copy this line up here oh man I really forgot about the shortcuts okay um, one thing it will compile but for clarity's sake we need to include the string header the string header will define 
all the string copy and sprinter functions. That should do it. If you're not on macOS and um, you can actually press Control of one here and get direct help for this, I need always to go to the header files, go to string, and then search for the function like string copy, copy string source to dest. Yeah, that's simple enough. Now, what do we have here? We included console IO, standard IO, and string.h. Then we defined a variable where we store our key code and something where we describe our key that was pressed. We clear the screen, say hello world, and we loop until the user presses the escape key. If the key was hit, we read the key, and if it was a zero byte, we know it's a special key. You can write that here as a comment. Special key handling. Then we make a switch statement. We switch. If it's an arrow, up arrow key, it was case 0x48, and we will store up arrow in the string. Otherwise, we will test for 0x50, which is a down arrow, and store down arrow. Then we handle all the other special keys and just store their key code in the string. And otherwise, we also store simply the key code in the string. Uh, that's pretty nice. And then we get the whole thing, hopefully. And we write print f key pressed and be done with it. Let's try it. Hopefully it works. Errors. Um, undefined symbol s. Yes, because we called it differently. Let's just rename it to s. I was lazy. Still errors. Undefined symbol key. Of course. And finally it works. Now let's try it. Spacebar, key pressed. The uh, up arrow. Oh, it did not work. Okay. Down arrow, the same. What did we do wrong? Oh, yes, of course. Um, we need to read again. I forgot that. If we have a special key, we need to read the second byte. Because the get character function will return only one byte and the zero signals that there's another special one coming. We can actually look that up in the header file documentation, con.io, and then get character. Both functions return the character read. Characters are available immediately, no buffering of whole lines. Special keys such as function keys and arrow keys are represented by a two-character sequence. A zero character followed by the scan code for the key pressed. Well, that's pretty um, clear, right? So that should work now. And we get it. Key pressed down arrow. Key pressed up arrow. You can also find out the key codes for left and right, which is for B and for D, if you want to use them. Spacebar, enter. Um, it would probably be nice to have the zero byte also printed. Let's change this as well. Uh, for all the stuff that we don't know, we write zero zero in front of that. Because then we can actually see that we have a special key, right? So these are our normal keys, those are the characters, and then we have the function keys. What you can't get with these things is like stuff like the shift key or the control or alt key. You can actually um, query them, but then you would have to read from the hardware directly. I will probably explain that in a future video, uh, but let's first finish this game and then we can dive into more details if, if you want to and see how to read the hardware directly, like the keyboard and stuff, which will be very close to the machine. We might have to use some assembler. Um, it might work without. That's definitely a whole lot tougher than using these functions here. Well, so that's what we learned today. We can, in theory, now query the keyboard and control our player character or whatever, and also query for quitting the game. And I think that's pretty good, right? Um, I will probably put up a gist with the source code to this, so that you can copy it directly to DOSBox and play around with it. 
And other than that, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you watch the next video as well. Share, like, and as usual, most importantly, subscribe. Because in the long run, it will hopefully make me be able to do all of these videos. See you next time. Have a nice evening.